NFL best or most interesting or whatever you want to call it. Big game. games. Yeah, big game. Big game previews week two brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can watch and wager on all of these games at any of Tunica's five, soon to be six incredible sports books. Horseshoe, Samstown, Gold Strike, Hollywood, First Jackpot, opening soon, the sports book at the Fitz Casino. You can get more information over at tunicatravel.com. You can get our picks at winningcureseverything.com. Go check that thing out. And if you are on YouTube or on the podcast, either one, hit that subscribe button. Help us out. Leave a review. Uh, if you're on YouTube, leave a comment. Help us out. Do that thing. Let's jump right in. Let's fire it up. Big game previews, number one. Vikings minus one and a half at the Packers. This might actually be off the board right now. It's not right now at my bookie. Okay, so my bookie. I don't. Not. I haven't gone to Tunica to see what their lines are. Um, I, so MGM lines, Caesar lines, and whatnot came out. The Vikings were one and a half point favorites. Then it got pulled off, and then I saw it back up at a few places. It's it's Vikings minus one and a half. Uh, the over under is about forty six. Some places forty five and a half. Uh, it's 12 p.m. Central Time on Fox at Lambeau Field. Look, Aaron Rodgers rose like Lazarus and led the Packers back from a 20 to nothing deficit to a 24 to 23 win over the Bears. Minnesota still has some things to figure out on offense, but Cousins is a big time upgrade at quarterback that looked good in a 24 16 win over the 49ers. The line, like I said, may be off the board uh, because we don't know the extent of Aaron Rodgers' injury. And that guy is worth as much as like eight and a half to ten points on a line, which is crazy to think about. But hang on, I, I want to address that right there, okay? Because people are using that to grade him and Tom Brady, who I'm emotionally invested in. <laughs> and 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 let me let me make an explanation as to why Tom has never moved a line ten points, because the Patriots have never put a quarterback out there named Brett Hundley or Deshaun Kaiser to yeah. play behind Tom. They've always had a competent, capable quarterback. If you took Aaron off there and you replaced him with Josh McCown, he doesn't move at 10 points. Exactly. Ryan Fitzpatrick doesn't move at 10 points. Your standard, normal – I know Fitzpatrick did something amazing. We'll get to that. Yep. But your standard backup quarterback doesn't move the line 10 points. Brett Hundley's move at 10 points. Deshaun Kaiser – definitely move at 10 points oh yeah yeah the vikings d got three interceptions off jimmy g last week if kaiser is playing in this game i mean it could be five it could be six it, it could be nate peterman numbers right yeah it, i mean it, it could just gonna, be crazy oh, no, it's gonna get bad uh how do, how do you feel about this even with uh, look i'm going to tell you i think the vikings win this game whether aaron Rodgers is in it or not completely like i love the vikings here i think they are fired up for a divisional game i love the vikings I think they're the best team in the NFL from top to bottom. I agree. And, and I think they're way better coached in this game. Um, I, the fact that we know Aaron's a little hobbled, I, I absolutely think the Vikings are coming for blood. A uh, little sneak peek into the picks, I, I don't think it's close. Yeah, you might be. You might be right. And also, that, that Packers defense, nothing to write home about. <laughs> uh, number two, game number two, Patriots. Minus two at the Jags. Over under is 45. 325 p.m. Central Time. CBS at TIAA Bank Field in Jacksonville. The Pats are 13 and three against the spread in their last 16 with Tom Brady under center. That's pretty crazy. The Jags uh, looking for revenge, possibly after losing a double digit lead in the AFC Championship game last year. Fournette might be out. The Jags' new weapons were not that impressive against the Giants last week, but they did get the win. Uh, did the Jags' defense maybe show a little weakness last week? I don't know if they showed any weakness. They're they're pretty good. Yeah, they're they're definitely good. I don't I don't know that they have a lot of weaknesses to show. I, I, I think this is going to be a low scoring game. I I think the I under, don't know how the Jags score. That that I I don't understand that either. I don't know how the Jags score, and I I love Tom. Anytime number twelve's back there, he's got a chance to win. I don't and this know. is only a two-point line. I mean, remember, this offensive line is not great. This offensive line is, is young, inexperienced. And I mean, they, they held up. up against the Texans. Yeah, but. I, I mean, it's not the same. I know it's not the same. What what I think about, yeah, not even close. But what I also think about the Texans is, as I talked about it earlier in the other segment, is the Texans, they weren't ready to play a full 60 minutes. 
No, no. They didn't. I, have, I don't think they so. didn't have the gas. They weren't in game shape. Um, and and I don't know that the Jags are going to be unprepared for that. I think the 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 Patriots offensive line is going to have to block them a full sixty minutes. I because of that thirteen and three against the spread number, like I I want to go with the Pats because the line is only two. Oh, if you get it under a field goal, no, you you just don't bet against Tom under a field goal. Exactly, you just don't do that. But at at the same time, I'm thinking like. Man, the Jags might really, really want this one. Like, you can want you know, it all you want. What? What? Hang on. What? Did, what did Lombardi teaches a while back? Hoping is not a it's game. It's not plan. a game plan. I understand. Hoping is not a game plan. I understand. You can want it all you want. I, but I, I mean, I do. I don't like, know how they score. I That's, do. I do it, like their coaching staff. I just completely agree. I like Doug Marone. Yeah. I, I just how I don't do, know if somebody can show me how they score. If Yeldon comes out and looks okay, looks serviceable. If one of these receivers does something spectacular the offensive line holds up look the, the Patri- smarter play the Patriots here. pass rush look pretty good now I know that the, the Houston's offensive line is going to be one of the bottom half in the league they're not good I, this was a pass rush by the Patriots I mean they they yeah. looked they look decent on defense I, I don't know how the Jags score this is not a Tom's going to go out and win this thing I don't know that he has to I think Gaskowski kicks tw- you know 12 points and I, we, I think we roll away. the smartest play here would be the under 45. Oh, me too. I don't think either one of these teams hit 20. I don't think so either. And I, I, I've been, I, I might could been see wrong the Pats before. doing it, but I don't think both of them do it. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess if, paid, if Tom showed up and put up 30 on him, it wouldn't it wouldn't, I mean, it wouldn't shock anybody. Me, no. But, uh, but no, I, under 45, I mean, this could be a 21 to 17 kind of game. I mean, that, that just sounds about right. 20 to 13, 20, you know, yeah. something. Uh, Ravens at the Bengals. This is a pick 'em. This is the Thursday night game, 7:20 p.m. NFL Network at Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati. It's a pick 'em. The over under is 44. Uh, both had really good wins, or well, good wins. Well, both had big wins, uh, and they are division rivals. So of course that makes this, inter- uh, this interesting. The Bengals scored 24 unanswered after a 23 to 10 deficit in the third quarter against the Colts last week. The Ravens' offense looked pretty renewed. I mean, they averaged 5.0 yards per play against the Bills. Uh, these teams look a lot like mirror images I was to me. Just about to it's, say it's the, the same. The damn battle team. of the aging, average quarterbacks and the defensive-minded head coaches. But but young, they're getting younger on the offensive line. Yeah, good young running backs that are exciting to watch. Defenses hey, are, are they, really. They both have yeah. some receivers now for the first time in a while. Like they they look like they could be the, pretty good. I swear, if you changed all the jerseys, the Larry o- David aside, thing is like pretty pretty. <laughs> If you good. if you had both these teams swap jerseys, aside from one of them being a short ginger and the other one being a tall <laughs> ogre, like like I wouldn't be able to tell the difference much in these teams. No, I agree. I mean, it's it's kind of remarkable. I'm excited to actually watch this game. These teams don't like each other in this division. Uh, this is probably the the division where there's more hatred than any of the rest. Oh, believe that. And uh, it, that's the the fans for these four teams cannot. St- Dandy one jump. another. I mean, it, I know that everybody thinks their rivalry is the best. These four teams, it's not that the teams are real good all the time, but these just they just don't like it. And the weather's always crappy. They all, <laughs> I like that all four of them play on real grass and bad weather, and it's just yeah. makes you pissed off all the time. It so does. For, for as much uh, playoff success, like one, the Browns don't ever get there. No, they've never been but there. But the uh, – but the Ravens and the Steelers have both, you know, won Super Bowl, Correct. multiple Super Bowls. And they make it to AFC Championship and, games a lot. And the damn Bengals can't win a playoff game. Like, and how Marvin Lewis still has a job, I don't know. But he, they look all right right now. The over-under is 44. Um, I might would go under the 44. I'm going under too, man. And, and I would take the Bengals at home. Me, you know? I can't believe it. Me too. Me yeah. too. That, that, I, I like the Bengals. I don't know. I don't know why I like Marvin Lewis, but. I don't know that. Well, I like nobody Marvel likes Marvin. Lewis. Lewis. Okay, <laughs> let's be real careful with what I said there. I, I like this Bengals team. I'm, I thought they were fun to watch. Uh, number four, the Chiefs at the Steelers. Steelers minus five. The over under is fifty three. Now this one fifty three twelve I might, p.m. I might go over. This is noontime. CBS at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. The Steelers uh, have had a tendency to give up big passing plays against even just competent quarterbacks. Uh, Much Chiefs, less. Yeah, much less like good ones that, Hill, that fling Hill. it, right? Uh, the Chiefs have weapons. The Steelers uh, have won six of the last seven in this series. 
since 2011. The Steelers had six turnovers at Cleveland last week, and I understand it was raining. I got that, but like, who's to say it won't be raining on Sunday in Pittsburgh? Uh, the Chiefs' ball hawks are going to be ready for this game. They're going to be pissed off that they got beat by the Steelers last year. Look, this is uh, this is in my gambling picks. I got the Chiefs plus five in this one. And I, I don't know necessarily that they win. But I think it is a really close game. And I think that the Steelers are making enough stupid mistakes right now that it can cost them. And being at home has never mattered for the Steelers. It just doesn't matter. As long as they keep letting Big Ben put the ball in his hands when the game is on the line, <laughs> everything's okay. The but, Chief, and you know the Tomlin Chiefs, will do that. The Chiefs are going to be fine. You know, you know Tomlin will he, do that. He got rid of the one coach that tried to hold Ben accountable, and he moved Ben's BFF and offensive coordinator. And and apparently, and then Ben turned it over five times, five times. In, in the first game. Um, so I, man, I think this is going. Right, so we talked about how low scoring we think the first two games are going to be. Yeah, no, I, do, I don't think this one's going to be low scoring. Oh, I think no. neither one of these defenses scare anybody. I think Ben's got enough weapons that's going to sling it around. Shoo Shoo Smith will shake free. The, the, the defense for the Chiefs is nothing to write home about. The Chargers dropped like four or five passes in that game. Um, well, they, and, and for they some still had reason, like 450, for, yeah, 500 yards. For I mean. some reason, they didn't play Mike Williams for three quarters of the game. He, he caught like he was targeted six times. He caught for all five of six of them. Like yeah. I think he's pretty good. Why didn't we throw to him more? Um, the I think Chief, they'll probably get that figured out. This the week. Chiefs won't figure that. They they won't make that mistake. By the way, no. I think this is going to be high scoring. I like the Chiefs to win the game. I don't trust Ben anymore at all. I think this game has passed him by. Now, I'll be that guy that in September is writing him off, and he might be leading them to an AFC Championship game or the Super Bowl. That's fine. I've been wrong before. Yeah. Right now. I mean, the good thing is with as many turnovers as he had last week, they still didn't lose the game. So, you know, that's <laughs> I guess it's something to brag. That's about. something to brag about. The Eagles minus three at the Bucks. The over under is forty four. That's at twelve p.m. on Fox at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida. Forty four. The Bucks scored over that by themselves last week. Yeah, but but remember, it's the it's the Eagles. <laughs> This it's the is, Eagles. This is one of the best defenses in the country. I want to know, are the Bucks for real after a 48-40 to 40 win over the Saints last week? Can Ryan Fitzpatrick, or as, as they were calling him today, Ryan Fitzmagic, I want to know if he can keep this thing rolling against this Eagles defense. I, I want to know if the Falcons have a good defense or is the Philly offense in trouble because they were not impressive in week one. I understand there was weather issues and whatnot, well, and this is kind of what Philly does. I have a question. Okay. Does Tampa Bay have a good defense? Uh, Well, no. Because that does they, that, you it, know. Here's the stat, right? Uh, <laughs> Tampa, Bay, Tampa Bay's got a good defense. Tampa team. Bay averaged 8.5 yards per play last week, but they also gave up 8.1 yards per play. Now, I don't think that Nick Foles is Drew Brees. I don't think the Eagles have the same type oh, of no, no, pace no. that the Saints do. Uh, but that defense is not going to give up eight yards of play. No, that's the that no. so that is the Nick Foles doesn't have to be Drew Brees, and on the other hand, Sean Payton lost that game because he decided to punt. Yeah, Ryan Clark, uh, not Ryan Clark, Kevin Clark, Kevin yeah. Clark for the Ringer, Ringer talked about this. Uh, he wrote about this. Just just let Drew Brees go four downs. Don't punt. If you give Drew Brees four sense. downs, he's going to get ten yards. Oh yeah, he Easy. would have absolutely gotten ten yards if they just kept giving it four downs. They would have never punted the entire game. They win the game. They don't lose the game. The mistake is, is they punt it. The, the Eagles are going to make Tampa Bay punt. The Eagles are going to slow this game down. Oh, yeah. They kind of hope that it's nasty and muddy and rainy in well, Florida. Well, they, they'll, they'll be able to run the football. And it, a lot of people thought, like, oh, Alvin Kamara, like, he's, he's just as good of a running back as Mark Ingram. Like, look, Mark Ingram got those between the tackle yards. Like he was the guy that would that would drive into the line and and actually get yardage, the Saints missed that because you had to throw the football. Like Alvin Kamara works best when when he's coming out of the backfield. Yeah, but and, they were able to throw the football at no point. Yeah, they were able to throw the football. Able to throw the but, football. But by God, like keeping their defense on the sideline is a big part of this. 
Like I, I think having Mark Ingram in there or having just a a competent running back for the Saints helps you out by keeping the clock going. And I understand the clock did move a little bit because God, they did complete a lot of passes. But here's the problem: they never they never led the game. You can't start running the ball to kill the clock if you don't have a lead. Not At a, no they, point in time no, no, did they have the lead running, in the game. I'm not talking about running the ball to to kill the clock. I'm not talking about killing the clock. I'm talking about giving your defense a chance to rest on the sideline because they were getting torched. Yeah, but Ryan Pitt, but Tampa Ryan Bay was Fitzpatrick. Get, Tampa Bay was getting torched as well. I mean, yes. that door swings both ways. I understand. I understand. I, it, I don't know that that's that cost them the game. It, and, it, and it might have. It could have. I don't um, think that's the only thing that cost them the game. We, we just, have no idea what to expect. Do you think the Bucks have this kind of magic to be two weeks in a row good? If they do, they may never bring Jameis back. Well, I'm, and they may now, do, they may not bring you, him back anyway. You know how I feel about but this. We, we've I don't, also seen Ryan Fitzpatrick do this crap before, where he looks awesome, like he looked awesome for mm-hmm. the Jets that year, and then fall apart. Yeah, falls back to earth. At, at any point in time, I don't think they should. And we've had this conversation. I don't think they should bring Jameis back at all. I don't care how Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick, I want to keep saying Fitzmagic now. <laughs> God, thanks, Dirk Cutter. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't care how he looks from here on out. No, I'm with you. I think he's showed enough to know that he's a capable, competent quarterback. He's not going to turn the ball over. No, you're right. You're right about that. Let's move into honorable mention real quick. The Texans at the Titans. Uh, Titans injuries, we have no idea what to expect from them. Uh, Deshaun Watson is actually probable for this game. Like, it's it, there's I'm, a chance be, that he might be, not play. He'll, yeah, be he'll be playing. Fine. But he'll be fine. Um, The Panthers at the Falcons. Uh, look, the Panthers have a good defense. However, their offense couldn't do anything against Dallas, which was kind of iffy. Uh, I would imagine the Falcons at home going to be fired up. Feel like they let one get away against the Eagles. Uh, I would I would take the Falcons there. I mean, it's a three point line. No, it's a four and a half or five point line. Yeah, it's a, it's a five. Um, I got a five and a half this morning. I would still take the Falcons on that. And playing at home, it's just a different beast for for those guys. Uh, the Browns at the Saints. This is an interesting one. An 0-0-1 team and an 0-1 team, and, and we didn't really expect that for at least one of them. Or really, we didn't expect those records for either one of these. Like, nope. I mean, it just doesn't make any yeah. sense. So which one is going to be able to bounce back? Uh, if the Saints defense is that bad, what can Terod Taylor do? What can Carlos Hyde do? Uh, you know, I mean, there's a lot of wide receivers. I, I, like The offense they're about to play in Cle- Now the offensive line is garbage, but the skill players in Cleveland – they're just as good, if not better, than the skilled players at Tampa Bay. They got a running game. Yeah. And they got a better quarterback. Are we sure about that? Yes, Tyrod is better than Ryan Fitzpatrick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, yes. Do we, do he was a that? top ten quarterback last year. All right, Ryan who, Fitzpatrick sat on the bench. Let's move into these segments. Uh, who is not making the playoffs? Right, who, after so, week one, who so, have we determined so this is, is not so, in it? So if you listen to me talk, you obviously know that I am a ringer fan. I love Bill Simmons and his show, and I, I watch a lot of him. We're going to steal a little little gag from them. I'm not afraid to admit that I steal things from other people. Um, you can call me a thief. I won't get offended or yell at you or break a racket. <laughs> they cross one. And when him and Cousin Sal do their picks every Monday, they cross a team off. Week one, we're throwing somebody in the trash. We're killing them, and we can't ever bring them back. Do you, do you want to say Because I think we all know who it is. Week one. Buffalo Bills. It's got to be the Bills. They're done. Like there is no, three. There's no coming back. Well, they they have nothing at quarterback. Josh Allen is still completely out of his element right now. They don't have anything at offensive line. They don't have anything at running they, back. They got nothing. They don't have anything at receiver. They didn't have a pass rush. Yeah, they're, they they can't cover anybody. You want to talk? If Gruden wanted to start over from scratch, he should have just went to Buffalo. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because they already have nothing. You don't have to run off the best defensive player in football. <laughs> All, right, All right, so we're rolling so with the Bills. Both the first Bills. coach fired. First coach fired. I want to talk about this. Here's, here's the three guys that I got odds for from my bookie. Number one, Hugh Jackson, plus 250. Number two, Jason Garrett, plus 800. And number three, wasn't even mentioned he was part of the field. It's Anthony Lynn from the Chargers. Are we sure he won't get fired before everybody else? If they start out the same way that they did last year, 
because he will absolutely teams, get fired. Special teams looks like garbage. I have no earthly idea why Mike Williams was not on the field for three quarters of this game. They finally put him in in the fourth, and he caught all these passes, caused the defense to take the top off the defense, and allowed a ton of underneath passes when he wasn't getting the ball. Caught every jump ball thrown to him. Didn't drop passes like his other receivers were dropping all day long. I, the Spanos family is not the market of stability. No, and that's why I would absolutely take him to be the first coach fired. Field is plus you, 500. You get him and every other coach that's not one of the top 10 coaches that you are. Yeah, I'll, like seven I'll, coaches. I'll take him at plus I would, 500. I would, take it, the, I would take the field knowing he's in the field. Jason Garrett at plus 800. Look, he ain't going to fire Jason Garrett in the middle of the season. That's you don't just think not so? Happen. No, Jerry's like he's setting his ways. That was his boy. Mm. That's a, if he wasn't his boy, he would have been fired already. Man, I can't. Yeah. I thought plus eight hundred was tasty. Uh, it's tasty, but there's uh, there's just no way that's happening. And then the last uh, and thing then I Hugh Jackson to... is yeah. is not going anywhere for right now. They Ooh. they just rebuilt his entire team. Mm. They just rebuilt his entire Ooh. team. They're not going to do that yet. I don't know. All right. Last thing I want to ask you. I love I love week one overreactions. It's something I think is fun to do. People tell you not to do it. I like to do things you're not supposed to do sometimes. Okay. Anything you want to change your mind on week one? Hell yes. <laughs> oh, my God. What, on, what are we changing our mind on? On our AFC South preview, I said that the Titans were going 11-5. and five. I think we I both had them winning, winning the division. The division. I think we both had them winning the division. And, yeah. and don't get me wrong. It's not like the rest of the division is lighting it up right now. Like, the Jags look good. <laughs> But, I mean, they played the Giants. And I think the we Giants thought three teams lesson. might come out of this division. We're definitely wrong on that, right? Yeah, we were way wrong. Three teams aren't coming out of this division. We were way, way wrong. <laughs> um, look, the Titans, like, their injury issue is a big one. If Mariota. Well, yeah, it's all, it's all it, on the court. It's all based on Mariota. And, Blaine and Gabbard ain't that, got it. On top of that, Mike Vrabel looked kind of lost. And and I understand it's his first game, first, and it was not a normal game. I, and I, it, no, I, it was not normal. I kind of want to give him a pass. I, I can't do it. I can't do it. It's I, so hard to figure out what he would actually look like if the game started on time, finished on time. He he would well. Have we'll see this weekend. Through. Yeah, it's in a dome. No, it's not in a dome. Oh, it's in it's in uh, Nashville. Yeah, it's in oh, Nashville. Somebody I thought it in Texas. Uh, so but, me I mean, uh, we'll see what he can do with Blaine Gabbert. I guess. Ma, we're gonna go back to this uh, first coach fired. I, I'm I'm willing to say it right here, right now. My Charger Super Bowl pick wrong. They're wrong. They're wrong. <laughs> but I, they can right this ship. They're going to look really good against Buffalo. This team is not winning the Super Bowl. Anthony Lynn is not winning a Super Bowl. He's not competing for a Super Bowl. He's not winning the AFC. He's not winning this division. It, a lot of things could go right for them. I do not believe in Anthony Lynn. I'm out on him. I was wrong. I like it. Done. All right, you can watch uh, all of these. You can wager on all of these. We've given you all the information that you need to be a winner. Now head over to Tunica. Get some action down on your favorite plays. As always, you can visit tunicatravel.com for more information.